We're speaking with Stuart Edelstein, Whence Our Words and Exploration of the Sources of English is the course uh, here at Ali uh, that he is, is teaching. And so you'll be really getting into the particulars of some of these strange aspects of the English language. One of those uh, that we we're talking about over the break is why the W before the R in several of our words like wrestling, uh, wreath, that sort of thing. Um, that's one of those strange little things. Where, where did it come from? Well, it came from Indo-European, which is that reconstructed language from about 4,000 years ago. And the way it's reconstructed is people looked into words from Latin and Sanskrit and other ancient languages and determined that there was a commonality among words that had the same meaning. One of them is a root, W-E-R, were. And that root, through the Germanic fork, resulted in a lot of W-R words, such as wrinkle, all having to do with turning. So you wrinkle, it has mm. to do with the turning over. Wrath is turning wrathful. Uh, wrestle. Um, wreath, uh, worry, wrong. When you turn the wrong direction, mm -hmm. you're turning wrong. Uh, but the same root evolved by way of Latin to V-E-R, which is close to W-E-R. So ver words such as versatile and um, vertebrae and vertigo, all these ver words all are based on the same W-E-R root. Interesting. Uh, there's another example I can give you, um, the cur sound. The cur sound means head. And also things that come from the head and things that extend. So head words from this cur Indo-European root are uh, cranium that holds the brain, the cerebrum and the cerebellum that are parts of the brain, uh, the cortex, and then it goes beyond that. It goes to uh, triceratops the dinosaur with three horns, rhinoceros, it used to be crinoceros with a horn, mm -hmm. and cornet, unicorn, cornucopia, and then it extends to more philosophical things like corner where two walls meet, and things like carrot that extends to the ground, hornet, the insect that's got the stinger, and 14 karat gold, spelled differently, but that comes from the fact that there are these pods of the carob seeds, and those pods are long and skinny, they extend. And the way in ancient Greece and Rome that they weighed precious gems was by weighing them for the number of carob seeds, and that's why it's called 14 karat gold. Hmm. That's why all these words like carrot and hornet are related. In my book, there's an image of a carrot that's a hornet that's a hornet that's a carrot, just as an example. That's fascinating, a lot of fun. and it, you know, all connected. And again, you know, kind of going through because we think the Romance languages, there's a separation between, but there, there's a, there's still very related. And, and right. you talked about that tree early on, um, you know, going four thousand years uh, before. But you know, it, 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 there's many more similarities perhaps than people would would be thinking about, or, or would think that are there. And what's really fascinating to me is to figure out why disparate words in fact, have a common source, and what it is that causes them to have a common meaning that makes distant cousins, you might think about it like a huge family, distant cousins ultimately related to the same ancestor. That's what's fun about it. It's fascinating. Speaking with Stuart Edelstein, the course is Whence Our Words, an exploration of the sources of English. Uh, it's the Berkshire Alley program. We'll continue our conversation with Stuart after this.